Hi everyone, my name is Sabi. I'm going to be talking about a joint work with Vishnu, William, and Daniel called Low Stabilizer Complexity Quantum States Are Not Pseudorandom. So we're going to start with a little background in quantum computing and quantum information. So the way we describe the state of an n qubit system is with a two to the n dimensional complex unit vector. This might be a familiar way of writing such a vector. We have a vector v that's a combination of standard basis states. The norm is one since it's a unit vector and the coefficients are complex. The first notational change we make is indexing over the space with bit strings. And we denote column vectors with this ket notation. And if we take the conjugate transpose of a ket, we get a bra denoted like this. And the inner product between two vectors is denoted this way. And this is the bra ket notation that's used in quantum mechanics and quantum computing. Evolution from one state to another is described by a two to the n by two to the n unitary matrix or quantum circuit. And any quantum circuit can be implemented with a universal gate set. So just like a Boolean function can be implemented with and or not gates or NAND gates or whatever, uh, there are also many quantum gate sets that are universal uh, that can implement a general quantum circuit U. Uh, an example of a universal gate set is the Clifford plus T gate set. This is going to be this gate set's going to be relevant for this entire talk. And the Clifford part of the gate set is made up of these three gates, the Clifford gates. These are the Hadamard, the phase gate, and the controlled knot gate, or the C knot gate. The Hadamard and phase are single qubit gates. And the C naught gate was a two qubit gate. And the T part of this gate set is just the T gate, a single qubit gate. And together, the Clifford plus T gate set is universal for quantum computation. So we're going to spend a little time talk talking about the Clifford uh, and T gate set, uh, starting with the Clifford gates. So any quantum circuit that's comprised entirely of Hadamard phase and C naught gates is called a Clifford circuit. A quantum state that's reachable from the all zero basis state by applying Clifford circuits is called a stabilizer state. And there's roughly two to the n squared stabilizer states. Uh, the stabilizer states and Clifford circuits are very well studied classes of states and circuits. Just to give you um, a sense of some of the properties and applications these have found, uh, stabilizer states exhibit the quantum mechanical property, superposition and entanglement, and quantum protocols like teleportation and super dense coding um, only make use of Clifford circuits. Um, both Clifford state, uh, stabilizer states and Clifford circuits form three designs. So um, roughly speaking, they like they look uniformly random in certain settings. And for these reasons and others, uh, stabilizer states and Clifford circuits show up in a bunch of different places in quantum computing and quantum information. First for error correcting codes in the 90s, and later for fault tolerant quantum computation, for randomized benchmarking, recently in learning and estimation algorithms, and a bunch of other stuff. And despite this, we know that Clifford circuits can be efficiently classically simulated. This is the Gottesman Knill theorem. So uh, any quantum algorithm that only makes use of Clifford gates is not going to give you any speed up over classical computing. 
And we also have efficient algorithms to property test and to learn both Clifford circuits and stabilizer states. So we have a pretty good handle on, on these objects. Now the T gate, we know uh, with, with the additional ability to apply the T gate, we know that the uh, gate set becomes universal. And we also know that the Clifford part is efficiently simulable classically. And so given a Clifford plus T circuit, the number of T gates in that circuit in a sense measures how complex the circuit is. And we'll see later in the talk more concretely that if you have a stabilizer state, when you apply more and more T gates, that generally takes your state farther and farther away from being a stabilizer state. So that brings us to low stabilizer complexity states. Informally, these are quantum states that are in the neighborhood of stabilizer states. The way we formalize this is with the stabilizer fidelity. The stabilizer fidelity of an n qubit state psi is the maximum overlap that psi has with any stabilizer state phi. And we refer to quantum states that have non-negligible stabilizer fidelity, a non-negligible overlap with some stabilizer state as having low stabilizer complexity. So low stabilizer complexity means the, that a low stabilizer complexity state is one that is close to a stabilizer state um, in terms of stabilizer fidelity. So given that stabilizer states have found many applications in quantum computing, and they are very well understood, what can be said about low stabilizer complexity states? Uh, specifically, can we property test and learn this, cla these, this class of states? Can we estimate the stabilizer fidelity of an unknown state? Or better yet, can we find the stabilizer state that achieves the stabilizer fid fidelity? So a stabilizer state with the maximal overlap between a given state. And it turns out we actually don't really know much. We don't have any answers to these questions. The best known algorithms are just brute forcing over all two to the n squared stabilizer states. And it, so it's possible that these problems are all intractable. And one natural way to probe whether or not that's the case is looking at the dual version of these problems, uh, which is checking if these states are computationally pseudo-random. So this just means that there is no efficient quantum algorithm that could distinguish a low stabilizer complexity state from a random state. And if that happened to be the case, then of course there's no hope of efficiently uh, answering any of these questions. Um, and so in this work, we kind of take the first step towards uh, perha perhaps tackling these questions by showing that low stabilizer complexity states are not pseudo random. Specifically, we give an efficient algorithm that distinguishes um, between the two. So given an n qubit state psi that's promised to be random or have low stabilizer complexity, we give an efficient algorithm that decides which. And we also have a nice corollary uh, that little omega log n t gates are necessary for any Clifford plus t circuit to prepare computationally pseudorandom quantum states. And this is the first lower bound on um, the resources required to prepare computationally pseudorandom quantum states. So we're going to spend the rest of the talk um, talking about how we showed these results. So for the efficient distinguishing al algorithm, we need to introduce the vial operators. So here we have the poly X and poly Z matrices. And we define the vial operators in terms of these matrices. 
So we have a bit string X with length 2n. The first n bits we denote by A, and then the second half of the bit string we denote by B. And the vial operator Wx is then this. It's the tensor product of these two by two matrices. And at the end of the day, this ends up being a two to the n by two to the n matrix. It's easy to check that um, these vial oper operators square to the identity, so they have plus and minus one eigenvalues. And except for the identity matrix, which is the vial operator you get when this x is the zero string. So except for the identity matrix, um, the eigenvectors of the vial operators, um, half of them have plus one eigenvalues and half of them have minus one eigenvalues. Okay, and we can also define a distribution over the vowel operators relative to some quantum state psi. And this is called the characteristic distribution. It's denoted by P psi. Um, and the probability that you sample some vial operator is given by this expression. And focusing in on this term, uh, this is a number between zero and one. And this, this, this expression is closer to one when psi is closer to being an eigenvector of Wx. So uh, if psi is closer to being an eigenvector of a vial operator, then P psi will corresponding, correspondingly give that vial operator more probability mass. Okay, so we have this characteristic distribution. This, you know, you can define this distribution, check it's a distribution, uh, but how does it fit into our algorithm? So in 2017, Gross, Nizami, and Walter showed that if you have four copies of a quantum state psi, it's possible to efficiently draw a sample from the distribution Q psi, which is this scaled convolution of P psi with itself. And this is the main subroutine we use in our algorithm. And what we do is we define this quantity eta, which is the expectation of scaled P psi with respect to the measure Q psi. And essentially what we do is we show that it's possible to efficiently estimate eta. And this kind of just boils down to computing an empirical mean. And then if eta is large enough, we determine the state is low stabilizer complexity. And if it's not, we decide that the state is hard random. Now the technical part is showing that eta, uh, you know, our choice of eta actually works. So that comes down to two lemmas. First, that if, if psi is random, then eta will be close to zero. And if psi has non-negligible stabilizer fidelity, meaning it's a low stabilizer complexity state, then eta will also be non-negligible. And another way to write the second lemma is that with eta, you can get an upper bound on the stabilizer fidelity of, of a quantum state. And this is the first property uh, of a quantum state that we know of that you can efficiently estimate and also gives you some upper bound, non-trivial upper bound on the stabilizer fidelity. This first lemma uses pretty standard techniques to prove, and I'm not gonna give any details about it in this presentation, but we're gonna spend a little bit of time talking about this second lemma. So the way we start the proof is just applying some definition. So eta, we define it to be this like scaled expectation. And then just using the definition of Q psi and the definition of expectation, we get this next line here. Remember that Q psi is like a scaled expectation of this convolution, which we 
Um, we've dropped these scaling factors. And by applying a few more uh, basic steps, Planchurall's theorem, and a basic theorem for which you can see a proof in Ryan O'Donnell's book on Fourier analysis of Boolean functions, we show that eta is proportional to the three norm of the Fourier co coefficients of p psi. And the interesting thing here is that uh, this uh, this the beginning of our analysis is turns out to just be the same as the analysis that shows up in the BLR linearity test. And if you're not familiar with the BLR linearity test, you can read chapter one of Ryan O'Donnell's book, which sort of introduces the topic of Fourier analysis of Boolean functions. And the, the first chapter concludes with this BLR linearity test. So why is this showing up? Um, some intuition for why that's the case. First, if the first thing to note is that if psi is a stabilizer state, then q psi is equal to p psi. And, and in that case, eta will be equal to one. And if psi is close to being a stabilizer state, it has a non-negligible overlap with uh, some stabilizer state, then q psi remains well correlated with p psi. And the way we finish off this proof is proving a lower bound on this three norm uh, in terms of the stabilizer fidelity. And for details on that, um, best to refer to our manuscript. Okay, so how do we prove our corollary, the T gate lower bound for preparing uh, pseudo random quantum states? Um, so we need this fact that quantum states generated by Clifford plus T circuits with order log n T gates have inverse poly stabilizer fidelity. And the proof of that's fairly straightforward. The first thing you do is argue that any Clifford plus T circuit can be decomposed into these interleaved layers of Clifford gates and a single T gate. And then you argue that um, the Clifford layers don't change the stabilizer fidelity at all. And each layer of T gate decreases the stabilizer fidelity by at most some constant multiplicative factor. And that's it. So how do we use this to get our corollary that little omega log and T gates are necessary to prepare a pseudo random quantum state? First, say that psi is prepared by a Clifford plus T circuit with order log n T gates. Well, then by the fact we just showed, uh, psi has low stabilizer complexity. And therefore, the efficient distinguishing algorithm we talked about earlier can distinguish the state from random. And so the psi cannot be pseudo random. And we conclude that little omega log n T gates are necessary. So as far as open problems go, one natural direction, uh, the pseudo randomness direction is to try to improve these lower bounds. In our paper in the conclusion and in, in appendix B, we explain that new techniques are needed. Uh, the short story is that even if it's possible there are some refinements to our analysis, uh, but even if those are made, the lower bound that we show will only be improved by a constant factor. Um, in the learning and estimation direction, uh, it'd be nice to know if we can property test or learn low stabilizer complexity states, uh, whether we can estimate stabilizer fidelity, and whether we can find um, stabilizer states that have large overlap with a given quantum state. And this might, you know, this, this sort of, this could be extended to uh, understanding how close a general unitary is to a Clifford circuit and could lead, you know, 
there there may be like for example decompositions where you can decompose a clip uh, quantum circuit into the Clifford part and the non Clifford part. Uh, yeah, and that's pretty much everything I wanted to talk about. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to reach out via email. Thanks.